This is Andrew from CardRunners.com doing a video for Card Player. Playing 2 4, no limit, uh, full ring on full tilt here. First hand, I got an ace check offsuit. Kind of in early ish position, but it's still a hand I'm going to raise in this situation. I've got a limper ahead of me, so I'll be interested to see you know, if he comes in for this hand. And then right behind me, someone called me as well. And the limper went in and folded. Flop didn't really come down uh, great for me, but it's also not bad. It's a lot of low cards. Odds are I probably didn't hit my opponent right here, so I'm going to go ahead and fire out a continuation bet and hope to take it down right here. Now, the turn's a bad card because, you know, it makes the board even more dangerous. There's straights out there. There's a flush out there. I don't have any piece of it. I don't even have a draw to the flush. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and shut down in this situation. He checked it to me, and the fourth card brought, uh, or the, the last card brought the four-card flush on the board. It's kind of hard for me to represent it because you'd think, you know, if I had like an ace of cl uh, clubs, I'd probably bet the turn. Um, it's possible I could try to squeeze out a, a small bet, you know, if I had like the jack of clubs or something, try and get some value out of it, but I'm not going to try and represent anything here. I just sat down. I don't know anything about my opponent. Um, I'm basically just, you know, let him take it away from me. You know, not to mention that he could have the flush here. And he bet out uh, pretty big there. And I went ahead and folded. Now, nowadays, um, six-man tables have become the most popular tables out there. Whereas, you know, it used to be full ring like this. So um, most people are playing six-man. But I think there's an advantage to playing full ring. And first of all, you know, I think the players tend to be a little bit weaker. Um, a lot of the good, you know, aggressive players who are playing a lot of tables at once, they tend to stick to the six-man tables. And, um, you know, it's nice to not have a bunch of those guys at your table. Also, I think... Um, People tend to play maybe a little bit too loose at full ring. You know, you, you certainly have to play uh, noticeably tighter than when you're playing six max table. And that's an adjustment that not everyone necessarily makes all the time. You know, the biggest thing is, is paying attention when you're out of position, which is a lot of the time at a, at a full ring table. You really need to be careful about the cards you're playing out of position. Um, you need to be willing to fold hands like ace 10, ace jack, you know, when you're in, in early position. And when you're in middle position with those hands, you have to be careful. Um, of course, you know, when you're in position at the full ring tables, you can still open up with weaker hands, you know, in, in the cutoff and on the button. But you can't get too carried away when you're in middle position and early position. I think that's the biggest thing that people maybe don't adjust to. But, you know, the good thing about playing full ring, if you can play a, a tight, patient game, um, you're probably going to get the money most of the time. Just because, like I said, people tend to play a little bit weaker, I think, in the full ring games. In this hand, we had an early position raise, went ahead and made a bet out of the flop. Um, there's a lot going on with that flop. There's a flush draw, straight draws. Now there's you know four card straight, so... Um, Pretty scary board. Uh, nobody's batted after the flop, and it looks like they're just going to check it down. I don't like that call that Tuna Fish made with a6 there. You know, it is suited, but he's dealing with an early position raise, and he's playing out of blinds with a weak ace, and that's a perfect example of you know a type of situation where people probably um, play too loose and they're going to get themselves in trouble. When when somebody's raising you know a position like that at full ring, they're almost always going to have an a6 dominated, and he's putting himself in the spot where. He's never really going to know where he's at. You know, he could be up against a middle pair like he was there, nines, and then when the ace comes, you know, he gets in a spot where he basically just check calls and hopes his hand's good. You know, if he's up against, like, an ace-king there, he's probably going to allow to lose a, money, lose a decent amount of money when he hits the ace. Um, you know, likewise, if the flop comes, say, six high, you know, is, is this pair of sixes good? I don't know. He's probably going to go into check call mode there as well. I mean, he's just put himself in a bad situation. Uh, out of position with the weak ace. Now, as far as the continuation bet that Elba made on the flop there with the nines, I think that's fine. Um, you know, if you get called, just shut down like he did.
Got a pair of kings here. If one of these guys comes in for a raise in position, I'm probably going to go ahead and three bet him. I still try and stay somewhat active out of the blinds, uh, even at full ring, you know, when, when I'm dealing with a late position raise. So that's, in fact, what happened, the button raise. I'll go ahead and three bet him here. You know, he folded, but a lot of times when you're in a situation like that, when you're dealing with a blind uh, versus a button, you know, they know that you know that they're raising wide there and, you know, with the wide range of hands, and they'll come in for, uh, you know, come in the pot with weaker hands after you three bet them just because they think they're putting a move on you. That wasn't the case there. It probably doesn't help that I, I just sat down and my image isn't necessarily the way I'd, I'd like it to be, but um, I still like putting in the three bet there most of the time. Now here's a hand of nine five suited, a little too weak uh, even in the cutoff to come in with. If it was like a five seven suited, and it was the same situation, and you know Nuchan doesn't doesn't raise here like this, I I would come in for a raise with a nine five. I'm just gonna pass on it. You really don't need to be playing complete junk hands like that um, when you're when you're at full ring. Now this player, Alba Rooney, seems to be fairly active. Or, you know, you got to be careful when, when you label someone active right away because they could just be catching cards. You know, I've only been sitting at the table a few minutes. So I'm still going to proceed with caution with that player. I'm in pretty late position here with an A7 suited. I'll go ahead and bump this one up. Especially when you see a short stack in the big blind. A lot of times, you know, they're not the best player and you can, you can take the blind away from them. Now, if there's only one player in this pot, I'd, I'd definitely bet it. I don't like betting it with two other people because there is a three flush out there, and you know, I also don't have a king, so there's a reasonable chance that one of them hit, hit it somehow in that way, and they're going to call my bet. So with two other people, I'll, I'll just go ahead and check it. Well, I'm going to throw out a little bet now. None of them has shown any strength. There's a reasonable chance. You know, I would think that MG would bet a king on the flop. And Meepaw has checked the turn really quickly. I don't think he has much going for him. So I think at this point, there's a reasonable chance my pair of sevens is good here. I got called pretty quickly by MG. I don't really see the point in betting again. I don't think I'm getting called by any hand that, that I'm beating. I'm going to check it to him. And really, I'm kind of hoping he just checks behind and we can show this down. And he had, he had, me, he had a pretty good hand there. But like I said, I think if he has a king, he probably bets the flop. So I wasn't really considering maybe, you know, middle pair like that. But a lot of times with the way that played out, I think you'd, you'd see a seven be good there. So I'm getting back in the spot, you know, where I'm more in middle position. Well, I would say I'm in early position right now. Um, so I'll just be tightening up, you know, as, as I move closer to the blinds. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't ever come in for a raise with a weaker hand out of position. You have to every once in a while just to mix things up, you know, especially if you're playing with some observant opponents. But that's, what, that's a rare case. So to recap here, basically, um, you want to be tightening up from your regular opening hands, you know, that you would play at a six max table, especially out of position. When, you, when you're in position, you can still be uh, pounding away at the blinds, and it's always good to play back, you know, when you're in the blinds uh, from active um, players, you know, on the button. 
but you, you just don't want to get too out of line. Uh, and and it, like I said, in general, I think the players are a bit weaker, so you'll probably get paid off anyway. Um, so you don't have to be playing crazy. Uh, you just need to take advantage of the people that um, are playing too loose at this table. You know, If you stay tight, you can go ahead and do that. So yeah, I recommend playing some full ring if you haven't really experienced it much. It's, it's a nice change, and um, I think you tend to find uh, weaker players, and that's always a good thing. Uh, you can find videos like this uh, longer in length at cardrunners.com. Normally our video is about 45 minutes. Uh, recommend you come check us out. This is Andrew for Cardrunners.